Okay, so Jim and I were chatting about what level do we want to teach ID grinding? And we decided that it's really more directed to the beginner, but there's going to be some cool stuff in here that even you senior guys might appreciate. So stay tuned for uh, some of these ideas that we came up with and some of the concepts that we think you all need to pay attention to. Let's start with a fundamental. So we want to talk about the ID grinder or the internal grinder for the beginner. And what does it mean? What it's all about? How does it work? And fundamentally, the components of the machine are the base itself or the bed, the table, which moves in and out, the headstock, which rotates, a chuck, which can be removed, the spindle, which is stationary on the bed because, as you know, the table goes back in and out this way. And the grinding wheel, of course, which is important because the type of grinding wheel you use is going to be critical for the type of material that you're grinding. So the grinding wheel selection in your setup is important based on what it is you're going to be grinding. Spindle speed, because you can change the belt or sometimes the speed of the motor is variable. The headstock speed, which is here, that's important. And the proper part holding. What do I mean by that? How are you going to hold the part? If it's an irregular part, you can't put it in a chuck, can you? So you've got to put it on a faceplate. That means clamping. That creates some other problems. And then other considerations are the condition of the machine. What do I mean by the condition of the machine? Well, how about this? I don't mean is the machine uh, in bad shape? Does it need to be rebuilt? What I mean is how do you know in a, in a shop where there might be four or five people running a machine, how do you know the condition that the guy that used it last left it? We don't know. He could have been creative. Not really creative. But he could have been the guy that took this headstock right here and pivoted it because he felt that it wasn't grinding straight, it was grinding a taper. When the problem was his grinding technique and not the spindle or not the work head. So how do we know that he didn't adjust that? You don't know that. You're going to go on that machine and you're going to hope that the part you're going to get out of there is going to be correct. But you really don't know that unless you used it last and you know how you left it. So what else do we need? How about the availability of accessories? What do I mean by that? If you're going to need a chuck, you need to have it there. You need a handle for it. You need a wrench for the quill. You need Allen wrenches as a general rule. and what about the diamond? You're going to need a diamond dresser. That needs to be there. If you don't do all these things before you start your job, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to run around the shop and pick up all these parts. My recommendation is this. Get it all where, right now. Get it set up before you start your job. It makes your life a whole lot easier. And what about the support equipment? What is support equipment? I call things like your indicator, a bore gauge, uh, Maybe calipers you might need, um, some rags, cleaning solution, maybe some air. But you're going to need all of these things, and you want to make sure that you have them all. It, it then makes it fun. Lastly, what about the print with the specifications on it for your part? So you need the print and you need the parts. Now, if you gather all this information up and you put it in front of you, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So let's say for a moment that you have to true up the work head. This work head, as we know, is on a swivel, as we mentioned right here. And you loosen a couple of bolts and you can tip it one way or another. Why do you want to tip it? Because you may want to taper in it, in which case you have to move it, or you may not want to taper in it. If you don't want to taper in it, how do you get it out? Good question. What we would do we would take something like an arbor that we know is true. We know it's straight within a couple of tenths. Put it in the chuck, like so. Put an indicator over here on the wheel head and move the table back and forth and see if we get a zero reading. If we don't, then we can adjust it right here. We can tap it back and forth until we get the taper out. Or if we want to taper, that's a whole other story. There are ways to put tapers in there accurately, and that's another video. But this is a way to get the t make sure the taper's out of there. And when you're grinding the part, the, as we mentioned, the wheel selection is so important. Uh, 
We like to use a 60 grit wheel. We think that uh, as a general rule for mild steel, hardened mild steel, we like a 60 grit. What hardness? Probably around a K hardness, I would say. And again, it's going to depend on the part that you're grinding, but 60K is a good rule of thumb. Or you could use a mounted wheel for smaller diameters, same kind of thing, but again, it's available in the same type of grits. You can get a 60K in a little wheel as well. Sometimes when you get this small, you want a finer grit because a grit's uh, just a bit too coarse for a, for a small wheel. So if you set this up properly, and you notice that we have the similar wheel here in the spindle. And dressing the wheel is important. How do we dress it? Well, there's a dresser that we bolt to the table here and we go back and forth and we can smoothen out the wheel and make sure that it's set properly. Now, what about the speed of the spindle? That's a calculation, folks. You're gonna want between 2,000 and 4,000 feet per minute, which is pretty fast for I mean, you're going to have to crank this thing up for this size of a wheel. You'll have to do the math, the diameter of the wheel, circumference, how many feet per minute, etc. That should be done before you even start grinding. You don't want to go over there and turn the machine on. Well, how do you change the speed? That's easy. You go over here to the spindle, and if you move, remove this cover, there's a series of belts in there, and sometimes pulleys. You may have to remove a pulley and put a, a bigger one or a smaller one on, but that's a way to change the spindle speed. Now. Can you cheat a little bit? Yeah, you can cheat a little bit and maybe it's, but you got quite a latitude, 2,000 to 4,000 feet per minute. That's a lot of movement. So there's no reason why you can't do a good job at say 2,000 feet or at 4,000 feet. Don't recommend going over that. Why do we say two to 4,000? Remember, if you have a wheel on here that's say three inches in diameter, 4,000 is probably gonna be way too much. In fact, it might exceed the safety factor of the wheel. So you gotta be careful about that. Important, I can't emphasize it enough, that you do the calculation before you start the job. That way you can adjust your spindle speed accordingly. What about the workhead? Same thing with the workhead. There are a number of speeds that are available via the belts or the pulleys back here, and you can adjust it accordingly. And some of them have a variable speed, which is cool too, then you don't have to fool around with belts. It depends on the age of the machine. So how fast should that run? Well, it depends on the diameter of the part. In this case, if you're running a part like this, you're gonna be cranking it a whole lot faster, probably around, I would say around 1,000 RPM. You get to this size, you're probably gonna need to run it five or 600 or maybe even less. And the bigger you get, the less speed. That's just a good rule of thumb. It's, it's not rocket science, but if you don't have your Allen wrenches with you, if you don't have all the tools you need, if you don't have the, the chuck key for your chuck, you're going to run around a shop and you're going to get frustrated. The key to being a productive and a great, great employee that your employer is going to love is to make sure you're organized and make sure you're set up. How else can I recommend I don't even know. I don't have any other idea. Of, and maybe you guys out there have some ideas. You know, you senior guys, you don't need to watch all this. You already know about most of this. But here's a couple of things you might not know about. What, as I mentioned, what about the taper in the machine? How do you know that the machine was left properly by the guy behind you? How do you know that this is set up properly? And if you have a critical part, let's say you need to grind it within a couple of tenths. And let's say the part's four inches long, and you've got to hold that, that within two tenths of being straight and two tenths of size, that's going to be a critical component. Can you imagine getting halfway done with that job and getting close to your finished size, and then you got an issue? You got a taper in there, or you're running out of stock and you can't fix it? Fix it first before you create the problem. One other thing what about lubrication? You notice that these machines have oilers on them. Uh, you'll see one here. And there's generally oilers for the ways. What about making sure that it's lubricated properly? Because if you don't, and I can't emphasize that enough, not only does it wear the machine out, but it creates a problem for you for the grinding because it just doesn't want to react right. 
and, and it gets stubborn, it gets sticky, and that creates another problem too. So th those are some tips that even the senior guys, I think, need to pay attention to. I know when I was in a shop, it's one of the things that I did all the time. I checked the machine out before I even got started. I gathered all my tools up. I made sure I had everything set up so I was not frustrated, and I did the job, and it turned out, not only did the job turn out great, but I had a lot of fun doing it, and I enjoyed doing it. So for me, that was the fun of it, was to be organized. So keep in mind the things that I mentioned, and also we're going to be doing another video. Uh, we're going to go out and back, and we're going to grind a couple of parts, and we'll show you how we grind them and how we set the machine up and what we look at. Uh, also, we think it's important that we talk about the chuck itself and how do we deal with the chuck. How do we hold the part? If we want the chuck to be accurate within a couple of tenths, we're also going to have a video on that and how we make the chuck as accurate as possible. And you'd be surprised how we can hold it within a tenth or two and not have any run out. And there's a couple of tricks to showing that. Two ways to do it. One way that I like over the other way and I'll explain why in that next video. So we hope that helps you out and thanks for watching.